This is my official front door. The Collins residence is in the new city, in a nice middle-class neighborhood. It takes some explaining, but I finally get Mrs. Collins to let me look around her daughter's room. She tells me that nothing's been moved in the room since the police were here. Well, nothing else. These plates certainly are happy. The shelves are filled with reference books, but it's nothing I'd be interested in. These bookcase doors don't have locks. Nothing in here at all. These papers lying all around don't appear to be very important. Papers lying all around don't appear to be very important. Looks like someone's gone through all the contents of these boxes. A simple yet attractive nightstand. Now there's no lock on the drawer. Looks like a copy of Sandra Collins' resume. Now there's no lock on the drawer. These masks look vaguely ominous. Now well, the bed looks comfy, but there'll be plenty of time for a nap later. Evidently, nobody saw anything the night Sandra was murdered. It's hard to believe with all these houses so close by. Ceiling fans turned on for no apparent reason. Shelves are filled with reference books, but it's nothing I'd be interested in. These bookcase doors don't have locks. Nothing in here at all. Nothing of interest in here. It's like a chair of some kind. Nice plant. Nothing very interesting about this desk plant. A color print from the Allen Collection of Mayan Art. Never heard of it. Cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This sewing table appears to have had everything knocked off it. Looks like it might be a credit card or an ID. An Autotech security card. I wonder if Sandra Collins worked at Autotech. No. Fitzpatrick said she worked at the college. Maybe this card was dropped by whoever killed her. I have a hunch that some of these drawers might just open. This drawer's locked. 
I have a hunch that some of these drawers might just open. I have a hunch that some of these drawers might just open. I have a hunch that some of these drawers might just open. Uh, nothing in here but unmentionables. I have a hunch that some of these drawers might just open. Uh, nothing in here but unmentionables. San Francisco Tech doesn't have any major sports teams. They probably weighed these pennants during chess tournaments. Nothing very interesting about this desk plan. Typical sliding closet doors. Nothing too fascinating about these clothes. Typical sliding closet doors. Typical sliding closet doors. Nothing too fascinating about these clothes. Typical sliding closet doors. Now this is the only door in and out of the bedroom. Autotech is housed in a nondescript building in the industrial sector. I go around to a side door and slip the card through the scanner. The door clicks open and I find myself in an empty lobby. These look like security monitors. That's an interesting piece of machinery. Looks like a security station. Luckily, an unmanned security station. Now your basic office chair. Either somebody accidentally left their hairbrush here or Autotech provides grooming tools as part of their customer service. A PC magazine. I wonder why they don't provide any decent reading material like True Detective or Highlights. Well, that's a pathetic selection of reading material on that end table. Yeah, typical office furniture. Built for longevity, not comfort. This door appears to be locked from the other side. This cord controls the blinds. Looks like I'll need to find a special card and passcode before I can open that door. Oh, I'm sure she's a very nice person. The door to the reception area is locked. It's a card marked Visitor's Pass. It's a Visitor's Pass. These remind me eerily of electric chairs. Wow, an ashtray inside an office building. Scandalous. Nothing too interesting to see through the glass in the reception area. Wait, that clipboard looks interesting. This is one of those fancy new windows that slides open and shut. Uh, it's a clipboard with what appears to be check-in codes written on it. I'm 
Unfortunately, the writing's too small for me to make out, and I can't quite reach it. That's just out of reach. From looking at this clipboard, I'd guess that every visitor at Autotech is given their own access code. This is one of those fancy new windows that slides open and shut. Now there's a window in the door, but I can't see through it due to the glare from the lights in here. Well, I hope I won't need anything from this cabinet before I leave Autotech. box of big Pacific cleaning detergent. Caution. Slippery when wet. Well, I can see through the window on this side. Well, that mop's practically brand new. Well, I can see through the window on this side. That's a mop bucket, still half filled with water. This door's an emergency exit, but it'll set off an alarm if it's opened. I drag the big goon into the storage closet and brace the door with a mop. That should keep him out of my way for a while. Dag Horton. The cufflink initials were D.H. Dag Horton. The cufflink I found had the initials D.H. Doesn't sound like anyone's in the office. Angel Darling. Wanted for murder, armed robbery, and smoking in a federal building. Mickey the Moose. 
Wanted for pandering and illegal organ donation. This looks like the collectible Patty Hearst Wanted poster. Slick Molson. Looks like a hairy Clint Eastwood. Wow, this must be where the Black Arrow Killer hangs his hat. I'd better not use this vid phone. It's probably bugged. One of these guys must be Horton. Now I'll be able to recognize him. A king-size ashtray. A perfect place for llama butts. And looks like a chair. Inside the microphone cartel. Oh yeah, I remember reading about this book, but for some reason it never got published. Looks like a desk to me. Looks like a sticky note. I wonder if this Gary Lee and Crazy Gary could be one and the same. Maybe I should check into the alley in back of the Golden Gate Hotel. Hyperpenium 360. Whoever this guy works for, they certainly get good equipment. A CD case. I wonder what our friend listens to. Let's see. Quadrophenia? Tommy? Live at Leeds? Hmm. Horton hears the who. A music CD player. I guess even cold-blooded killers enjoy a good tune now and again. Kind of a lame hiding place for a key. A music CD player. These desk doors don't appear to be locked. Looks like the same kind of junk I keep in the top drawer on my desk. These desk drawers don't appear to be locked. Looks like a desk to me. A necklace, huh? Horton must keep it here for special occasions. I've got all I need from here. Unless I miss my guess, it looks like the Black Arrow Killer took a little memento from his last victim. A little Bo Peep. Let's see what's behind this drawer. A llama matchbook tin. I'd walk a kilometer for a llama. A llama cigarette tin. Mmm. I'd walk a kilometer for a llama. Two of these surveillance photos show Emily in the Flamingo. The others must be of Sandra Collins. Let's see what's behind this drawer. Uh, the bookcase is full of reference books. Nothing too interesting.
This key looks like it might go to a padlock. This door leads back to the hallway. This door leads back out to the lobby. That's the way I came in. If this Gary Lee and Crazy Gary could be one and the same. Maybe I should check into the alley in back of the Golden Gate Hotel. These doors lead to the Bruin Stew. So, it was that young woman I saw you in here with? New romance? No. She's a reporter for the Bay City Mirror. She wrote those articles you were telling me about. She gave me some new information, so I need to check out a few things with you. I'm pretty sure that's Crazy Gary's real name. I'm pretty sure I've never heard that name. I hope you ain't messing around with those guys, Mike. I hear they ain't so easy to work with. Sorry, Mike. I can't help you there. So Gary Lee and Crazy Gary are one and the same. I've always steered clear of him, but I happen to know that he usually hangs out in an alley behind the Golden Gate Hotel. This gate opens up to the alley behind the Golden Gate Hotel. And he lifted his voice and prophesied. I've heard about in Crazy days, Gary, but we've never formally met. He appears occasionally in some nook of Chandler <laughs> Avenue, <laughs> ranting wildly <laughs> like a space age By Moses strung out on Demerol and bad scotch. And it will. A blessing be upon you and your progeny unto three generations. How may I assist you in your thirsty quest for knowledge? Yes, that is my name. Though I am aware that it is not the name I am known by. Yes, I know him. He came to me bearing a bottle of exquisite scotch. In exchange, I was to watch to see what deliveries were made to the Fuchsia Flamingo nightclub. Earlier today, I spoke with him and told him that I saw a package delivered yesterday. He was very pleased. For your information, only minutes ago, I saw a light in the water tower above Rusty's fun house. I better go back and check up on Rusty's roof. This gate opens towards the future flamingo. Rusty's door is always open.
I climbed the ladder to the water tower, trap door, and used the padlock key from Horton's office on the Meister lock. The key fits like a glove. You know, this clamp's been sprung. Useless. It's a tube of an old telescope. This looks like some kind of viewing device. Unless I miss my guess, it's pointed right at Emily's apartment window. There is somebody up in Emily's room. Look, I've had it with you. Look, I hear you have a stretcher. I swear to God, if you don't let me go, he's going to kill her. You better be on the level. God. Take the back stairs of the Flamingo down to the street. Maybe I can still catch the Black Arrow Killer before he gets out of the neighborhood. That door will take you inside Rook's Pond. Listen, Rook, I'm looking for a man. He's dressed all in black and he just attacked a girl over at the Flamingo. Have you seen him? Yes, I, I heard a noise outside my shop. When I went out to look, I caught a glimpse of a black figure. A, a moment ago, I heard a noise on top of my roof, but I don't know how it could have got...
Get back up here. I'm not through with you yet. You picked the wrong B.I. to screw with today, pal. Well, well. If it isn't Mr. NSA alumnus, Dag Horton. I have the strangest feeling he's not the real Black Arrow killer. I'm missing part of the picture here, but what is it? And what's the connection to Malloy? The cops show up right after I get a peek under Dag Horton's mask. They take my statement, then ask if I'd like to come and try the new coffee blend down at the station. I happen to know their coffee tastes like llama spit, but they're just being civil. When we get to the police station, I'm escorted into Mac Malden's office. You don't say. Yeah? Who told you that? Did you know the guy you threw off the roof? I didn't throw anybody off the roof, okay? Like I told your lackeys out there, we were rollerblading. Things got out of hand, he jammed his wheel, and the next thing I know... You seem to forget I'm a cop. And I'm a tired, pissed off cop. If you keep getting on my nerves, I can put you in a drunk tank. We can do this whole thing again tomorrow. So. You chase the guy up to Rusty's funhouse. Then what? Well, there was a black avatar speeder up on the roof waiting for the guy. I jumped him and we struggled, but he went right over the top. We got a witness says the attacker was carrying a box when he ran from the flamingo. We didn't find it. You know anything about that? No. I've told you everything I know. All right, Murphy, you can go. Your story matches up. Right? There's one more thing. The NSA is getting involved in this. They're interested in that missing box. They're gonna wanna talk to you. Don't get too smart on this one, Murphy. You're in way over your head. Well, uh, thanks for the tip. Oh, you're welcome. One more thing. Oh. Man, this is not where you're going to tell me. Stick around in town. We might have to ask you some more questions. How many times have you told me that of last 10 years? This case is getting way too complicated. There's a connection between Horton, the NSA, and the box Horton stole from Emily's apartment. But what is it? The NSA getting involved worries me. And then there's that gorgeous woman who got me off the hook. Who's she? I guess I need a plan of action. But first I need to talk to Emily and find out what she knows about Malloy. And then about the box Horton stole from her apartment. Sheesh, it's gonna be a busy day. Just the man I wanted to talk to. I understand the Black Arrow killer struck for the last time. Care to make any comment? Yeah, I've got a name for you. Dag Horton. Thanks for the lead. I'll see what I can find out about this Horton guy. This could be just what I need to top off my story on the Black Arrow Killer cover-up. Yeah, I'm sure the NSA is just gonna love it. Yeah, I know.
Don't know anything about it. I can't help you, but I'll check my sources. There's nothing I'd like more than to light a fire under the National Surveillance Agency. It's like they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Autotech. Gee, that sounds familiar. Wish I could help you with it. Doesn't ring a bell.